Welcome back, everybody. We can't quite travel to see each other, but we might as well be on a boat for this one, and we're pretending that we're gonna be, because today we are reviewing one of the most popular beers in the world, the king, no pun intended, Corona, which does mean crown, the king of the Mexican cerveza, Corona Extra. Alexandra, I'm so excited for this one. Summer is coming, and this is part of our Beer Bracket celebration, a string of episodes that kind of open up the lead up to summer. I've been waiting all day. I mean, you can smell the summer in the air, and I can't wait to smell yeah. the corona filling in the room and getting us in that summer vibe. Man, I know. You've got your white linen summer shirt on. I've got my lucky fishing hat on, and I've got my, uh, my sailing shirt on, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to feel like we're on some kind of quarantine vacation right now. <laughs> so like I kind of mentioned, Corona is a, well, they call it either a pale lager or a pilsner, right? But I think originally it was brewed as a pilsner and it's from the 1920s and 1925 is when they first started brewing it. Currently brewed by Modelo. You might've tried Modelo, which is another Mexican cerveza that you can find. Cool thing about this can, I really, really love, you know me, I'm kind of a little bit of a graphic design nerd. I love looking at the labeling and the branding of cans like this. So of course, Corona does mean crown in Spanish and then Corona Extra. And you have the little griffins here, the body of the lion and the head of the eagle and the crown, of course, for Corona. And you have the little iconic little circle there. It's a set of vase on the inside there, which is meant to represent the sun over the ocean. That horizontal blue rectangle there, which I think is, imagery that most people would associate with this beer. That makes a lot of sense. And that's why when you look at, even just look at the can, you're thinking about being on a beach on that perfect sunset like. It's in the can, it's just like tricking you. It's there, it's there. It's subliminally embedding that message into your brain. One thing that we do want to clarify, Alessandra and I, before we get into this review, you might be thinking, guys, what are you doing with the can? Why don't you have the iconic Corona bottle? Well, there's a whole reason for this, which we're gonna get into in our next episode, Corona Can versus Bottle, in a lot more detail. But essentially, when we're doing reviews, we try and get what's close as possible to the actual core of the beer, the truest form of the beer. So as you know, if you have a bottle that's transparent, Right, Alessandro, like transparent white glass, like the Corona bottles are, or green. You get a lot of off flavors in that beer from the light getting through to it. So it creates some flavors that aren't necessarily meant to be there, but that could still be iconic and associated with the beer, but aren't naturally in that beer after being brewed. So for the sake of reviews, whenever we can, we stick with the can. That's absolutely well said. So that's might not be exactly what you imagine. Like I know uh, if I am also thinking myself, most of the time when I'm drinking Corona, I'm drinking it out of the yeah. bottle. Uh, but <laughs> if you're curious about that, uh, we are gonna be talking extensively about that in our can versus bottle episode. So make sure you check that one out. Can't wait for that one, can't wait for that one. My friend, summer is upon us. Shall we crack these open oh, or yeah. shall we get festive? Please, please, let's go. Let's go. There it's going. So I gotta say up front that there is a wide variety of different beers that I appreciate. This is actually one of my favorite beers. I have so, whoa. Ooh, it's a nice aroma. I'm so used to drinking it straight out of the bottle without pouring it out into a glass. Yeah. Well, my friend, aroma cheers. Aroma cheers to you, my friend. Uh, let's get into it. Well, it's quite pleasant, isn't it? It's quite delicious, I would say. So I do get classic uh, lager-like uh, aromas, toasted, very gentle, subtle, subtle. Yeah. slight hop, I would say grassiness, uh, but it's very subtle, very, very gentle. 
it's very refreshing already from the smell. So it, it really invites you to want to get in and get a sip. And now as far as complexity, there's there's not like a lot. The, the, the aromas are very subtle. So um, yeah. I like them, uh, but I don't think I like them quite as much to give it a three. So I think I'm going to stick with a two on this. I think it's a very good aroma, uh, clear uh, and crisp. So yeah, those stereotypical uh, Pilsner pale lager aromas are there. You get the breadiness. Yeah, that breadiness is pretty much the only thing that you get, right? Um, as, at least out of a can. I know in the bottle, there's some differences there, which we're not gonna get into now, just strictly sticking to the can. Um, all I'm getting out of this is that breadiness. But you know what? When you're talking about a beer like Corona, you want it to be light. You want it to have just some kind of flavor there, a nice light uh, a flavor that isn't too offensive, but you want all these different elements to be easy, easy to take in. This is the kind of beer that you, is meant to drink four, five, six, or plus of them in the sun when you're sitting on the beach, right? So there's nothing too heavy about it. I really like this aroma. It's really nice. It's really pleasant. Is it a three? No, it's not that complex. The only thing, and I'm not happy to say this because I really, really love this beer, but the aroma just, it fades really, really quickly. I don't know if you're getting the same experience out of the glass. Once it's had time to breathe for maybe four or five seconds, the aroma's kind of gone and it doesn't really smell like too much. So what's there is pleasant. It's pretty basic as far as a Pilsner's going. So it's gonna get a one on three for me for the aroma. Yeah, but you know what that means? We get that aroma out of the way, we get to move right on to the taste. We can get into the taste, my friend, cheers. Hmm. Go right ahead. Oh, let everybody know. So, taste-wise, I, mm -hmm. I don't get too much of a sweet element. At least not at first. It maybe lingers a little bit after a second or two. Bitterness is very, very light. Like there's almost none, uh, no hot presence. It's it's almost yeah. all like a bright uh, acidity, and then like it really is gone. Like it fades away. Uh, very fast, which kind of like is what it's meant to be. Something that is easy, like exactly. you mentioned, easy to drink, refreshing, and something you can really have like a, a few off with. Absolutely. Um, so I'm debating, like I think on the on the taste, I, I, I can't go very high. It's nice, it's doing what, what it's supposed to, but I think it's gonna get a one on taste for me because I don't really get a lot with it just slightly bit of sweetness, a little bit of a hoppiness at the finish, and that crisp, yeah. clear, almost like uh, fresh water. Yeah, and guys, I do want to clarify one thing, like anything from one to three, it's different levels of good for us in our system. Absolutely. If there's something we don't like, it doesn't get any points. So anything from one to three is nice, good, or great. And I'm gonna agree that this is a one on three for taste for me as well. Not because there's something offensive there, not because there's something I don't like. There's just not a lot there, but that's by design. Like you said, this is meant to be something that's very easy to drink, very refreshing, very light. Something that's almost like a soda that you would drink in the hot sun on a summer day, right? Yes. It's, it's meant to just be an easy drinking beverage that you can have a couple of, and it's not offensive. It can pair well with any kind of food that you're eating. So this is the perfect kind of barbecue beer. If you just want something that's easily gonna pair up with whatever it is that you're frying up on your grill. I mean, you, you get what you smell, at least for me, that breadiness, mm -hmm. slight bitterness from the hops, but very, very slight. But I think this is one of the reasons why the bottled version is so preferred for a lot of people, because those off flavors from the transparent glass add so much more they add a whole other range of tastes into the beer that you don't get with a straight up can version like this. You get that nice breadiness that you do get in the aroma, but not much else, a little bit of bitterness, but even then, barely, barely bitter at all. But that's what makes it so refreshing. That's what makes it so easy drinking. You can pour out a Corona, anybody could like this. Your grandmother, who's not a big beer drinker, <laughs> you can give her a nice cold Corona on a summer day. She'll drink two, three of them happily. <laughs> and that's what it's meant to do, getting grandma drunk. <laughs> I like that image, my friend. I like that image. <laughs> but uh, I agree with you that this is a, a completely new experience for me too, because I've never really paid attention so much uh, to this particular beer and poured it into a tasting glass out of a can. 
because normally again like i also drink it out of the bottle so this is a quite different experience so i'm so excited Absolutely. for the uh can uh, versus bottle because that's going to be revealing a lot of differences i think compared to others that we've done before so but let's get into the mouthfeel tell me what you think we got to give it our standard mouthfeel refresher first though you're absolutely right my friend i almost forgot let's uh let's give it justice here mm. the aroma when you first pour it out is so nice though it's really really nice so carbonation is very light even after refreshing it. And I was thinking the same thing also when I first took the first sip. It's there, but it's really, like Joe said, it's more like a soda. And, yeah. and the, the, the thing, the word that keeps coming in my head when I take a sip is really refreshing and water-like. Uh, we've yeah. talked about on other beers where it's they are oily, they're sticky, they're, they're, some of them are a little bit more heavy. And, and, but the way this drinks, to me, it's really very, very similar to water. Uh, and in the way yeah. that it refreshes and it, it it's, it's quenching your th thirst. So like, I think like that, carbonated water. Uh, it's it's just like very well done uh, in that regard. I do personally think though that having a little bit more carbonation would be my personal preference. So I'm gonna stick still with the one here on the mouthfeel, even though I think that it's an amazing. Uh, refreshing uh, feeling that you get from it. But because of that lack of carbonation, it's not bumping it up to that uh, two for me. You know what, man? I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. But I feel so bad that one of my favorite beers that it's been so good to me, so good to me over the years and during my travels and my relaxation periods, to just give it a series of ones, I feel like I feel like I'm dishonoring it, like I'm betraying it in some way. And you know what, on, with any other beer, I, I think I have to give this one a pass because with any other beer, this would be a one, perhaps even a zero for mouthfeel because there's, like you said, it's like drinking carbonated water, like a like a can of LaCroix or something. There's slight carbonation. Um, the carbonation kind of stays there. It's like fizziness. It's a fizziness like drinking a soda or carbonated water, but there's not much else. There's there's not anything that coats your mouth, that coats your tongue. Um, there's no astri like astringency like you would get with like a sour beer or something super acidic. Uh, there, there's nothing else there, but you know what? Because it's so refreshing and it's so well done, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a boost and it's getting a two for me, a sentimental two. And, and don't forget that uh, we have the overall and the overall, <laughs> it's also designed to catch some of those elements that are not necessarily within the other categories, but can kind of like play within into your emotional aspect because let's not forget that like that's what beer is all about is what it means to you so it's good like what you just did like it maybe was a one but because of the way you feel and the experiences that it's bringing back to mind it deserved yeah. that extra bump and that's perfectly fine so i invite you guys to do the same like when you're tasting a beer and if you're using our rating system or your own rating system and hopefully guys you are enjoying a corona extra while watching this review drink along with us put your best fishing hat on have a good time. Watch us outside, sitting out in your backyard or on your balcony in the sun. Yeah. Watching us on your phone, sipping a Corona. If you are, cheers to you. Enjoy that Corona. My friend, what do you think about the finish? So finish. I would say that on the finish, surprisingly, is where I do taste uh, the hops. Well, surprisingly, mm -hmm. yep. to a certain point, because hops always show up like a little bit after everything else. But I do get a little bit of that slight hoppiness. The breadiness is there, but it dissipates very fast. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of bitterness to kind of remind you that you just had a sip of beer. Again, like there's, it's not very complex, which is part of why this beer is extremely popular. For my personal taste is, is gonna get like, again, like a one on the finish because there's not a lot happening, but this is again, like not a bad thing. It just means it's a nice beer. And again, one, two, and three are different degrees of good. You know, you get the breadiness, you get a little bit of the bitterness from the hops, like you mentioned. One more. Uh, I think this is another case where if it was any other beer, I would give it a one. But because this is so well done, this is so masterfully brewed. I'm always blown away when I have a Corona. Some people take it for granted. They overlook Corona because it is very light. It's very easy drinking. There aren't really strong tastes there. It's not a really strong aroma. But to brew a beer, that's 4.6%. It's not like 4.3, 4, 4.2, 4 like some other light beers. 
you know, it's a couple of decimal points up there, closer to five. So, and it's insanely smooth and refreshing. Like this is probably the most refreshing beer I can think of. So it's gonna, I'm gonna bump this up to a two as well, because there, even though there's not much there, what is there is so perfectly balanced. So I'm giving it a two. Now we get down to the overall experience. And this is interesting because like you said, this gets a little bit more subjective in the sense of how was the Corona experience for you? As you've seen, like I, I lean more towards the one, but on the overall, I think that I'm gonna have to agree uh, with what you've said in these uh, past few points, uh, that it's very master, uh, craftful uh, and masterfully, maybe if it's a word, <laughs> I don't know, we'll find out, uh, done. <laughs> because uh, it, it really is difficult to balance out the flavors, leaving very little but still giving that perfect beer uh, essence. So because of that, I'm gonna give it a two on the overall experience. Man, for me, maybe it's because I'm wearing my fishing hat. I don't know, maybe it's because summer's coming and living up here in Canada, we had a long winter. You know, with COVID, we've been locked inside for a long time. So really excited for this upcoming summer. Maybe it's all these things together. Maybe I'm having flashbacks to past beach vacations, sitting on a boat, but this is gonna get a solid three on three overall for me as a beer experience, my friend. And again, this is subjective, but as far as opening a beer, pouring out a beer, drinking it from beginning to end and enjoying it for what it is, I can't take any points away from this. I love <laughs> a good Corona. It is so refreshing. It doesn't make you feel bloated after like some beers do. You know, if you have one or two of them, you feel totally fine, almost like you're drinking water and hydrating yourself. So there's a whole bunch of bonuses there. It's all right, so final scores, tallying them all up for Alessandro, that comes out to a 2.33 on five, which is a nice beer in our rating system. Interesting, 2.33, doesn't sound too high, but you know, it was an enjoyable experience for you, you did really like the beer. You know, that's still a pretty good score. For me, it was a lot higher, I would say, it came out to a solid, even three on five, which in our rating system comes out to a good beer. My friend, this was an amazing experience. Let us know down below. Let us know what you think about Corona Extra. Does it make you feel like you're on a boat? Like it does for me, and bring you back to different past experiences you get all nostalgic about? Let us know. My friend, this has been so much fun. It's always a pleasure. And don't forget to close your Corona beer bracket. Maybe, maybe open with a bottle, have a can in between, or, you know, three, four, five cans in between, and then close with another bottle. Exactly. Yeah, it's up to you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Keep an eye open for our can versus bottle battle, our versus battle, which will be coming soon. Which one are we going to prefer? Are we going to like the can better? Are we going to like the bottle better? After reviewing it straight out of the can, we're going to find out. See you soon, guys. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.